Good day all, and welcome to this week's vlog, which is going to be part two of our little trip to the Sandwich Antique Center. And I thought for opening today's vlog, I would, uh, we're still in Sandwich, we're down at the, uh, the Sandwich Canal, I mean the Sandwich uh, Harbor, and here you can see this is the sort of the Cape Cod Canal Visitor Center here in Sandwich, and uh, this is the opening of the canal. which leads through on and passes through to the other side so large ships can get through. And you can see in the distance, the Sagamore Bridge, one of two bridges which leads from the mainland to Cape Cod. And uh, the second bridge, which is down the other side of the Cape is uh, the Bourne Bridge. So I just thought I'd open today at the opening of the canal, the little visitor center. And then uh, I'll probably get some footage. Oh, and there you can see the, uh, the Coast Guard station in the distance. And then I'll probably uh, maybe put in some footage on the drive showing the harbor as we uh, drive by. So for now, let's just get into our, the rest of the visit to the Sandwich Antique Center. All right, let's get to it. <laughs> I love seeing all these patterns of wood together. I just think this little open uh, colonial style cabinet with all the wood and metal just looks so lovely. Look at that wonderful hand pump. I love this. Uh, the candlesticks are quite lovely. Uh, oh, that's a darling little cabinet hanging on the wall with the chicken wire. That's really adorable. And I love the bird on the big pot here. You can see the cost. It is a quite uh, lovely version of it. It's from 1880s. Really pretty. It would be lovely to uh, use in the kitchen for things. This is just a pretty display. It's so nice to see uh, linens and such. Oh, what a darling old watering can. This booth often has some interesting sort of outdoorsy things like the signs and uh, various, sometimes they have good garden implements and things. Not so much, they didn't have as many things today there, but I have bought an antique uh, watering can from that booth before. And this booth mainly focuses on uh, prints and uh, original pieces like that. Now there's so many cases, I'd probably have to do another trip just to do everything, so I'll try to get what I can. This is a really sweet, I believe it's Chinese. Simple depression press glass. A little, I love brown and white transfer wear, darling little jug, and of course the quintessential blue and white, blue willow. I look at these um, egg cups every time I come in here and they are still here. I have a feeling one day they are going to be mine. I just have to wait for the right time that I feel it's worth the cost. And of course, uh, some of the blue willow, of course, isn't necessarily rare, but um, I'm always adding to my own blue willow because it's my main daily use china. So I have a collection, you know, some things are modern pieces, um, just because of that they're not as... Uh, you don't worry as much about putting them in the dishwasher. So many various cut glass. Oh, darling old inkwell. Look at this sweet little Toby jug. He's darling. Oh, look at this sweet little jug. That be so I just love the little jugs with the hand-painted scenes. Very Victorian. This is a beautiful inkwell. I mean, a uh, writing desk. Of the details and of course there's a, some lovely pewter in here but look at all the detail on the the grain of the wood and the beautiful cut glass just imagine the travels that went upon again so many cases with so many things I'd almost probably do another trip one day oh I love the tramp art 
a uh, very 1930s. Some more transfer wear. This is a darling, looks like a 1920s set. And uh, as I said, there's so many cases. Now, don't worry if you don't see everything in this visit because I will happily return here. I, I love, this is one of my favorite antique places, so I will come back and go slower over certain cases. But there's so much to see that uh, I figure we'll just come back for a few visits. I love the little Peter Hunt lamp in the corner. Peter Hunt was a well-known um, uh, painter, a decorative painter on the Cape in the uh, 50s. I, have to, I think I talked about him once in a vlog before I have to talk about him again. But you can see so many beautiful things. Oh, that's a lovely chest of drawers or dresser. And I actually, I'm um, doing over some things on my little uh, antique cottage here in the area. And I need a new little uh, chest of drawers or a bureau. Wow, this is marked down to 195 and I love the little Hancock um, knobs. And you can see it's an old piece, it's pegged. The drawers are pegged. So this could really be a lovely piece. I have to take measurements because this could really look good in the... It's just a tiny little bedroom. Very small. I think it's like 10 by 12. So it can't be very large, but I think it may fit. But I'm going to have to take some measurements. And of course, the darling little um, mirror. And uh, I'm not sure if I'd call it a shaving mirror or a makeup mirror. You can see how darling with the little drawer. 165. That is a shaving stand. Oh, it's inlaid as well. Things like this are often also really good in the uh, in the studio. I love to have things like this with little drawers. And uh, just be careful with that. I don't want the drawer to stick. But you can see it's lovely. And then that lovely painted Hancock desk in the back in the ochre gold. Oh no, this is a beautiful old primitive early American piece. This will probably be pricey because it looks like it's authentic yes 950 new england lift top cabinet and it probably has old scratchings on the lid from days gone by but this kind of piece would be beautiful in a freestanding kitchen or even as a little in a little mudroom where you could kind of set your things down as you come into the room now this booth i actually have bought some lovely hats from before but i don't see any hats here today some more blue and white and I love, of course, the milk glass, the hobnail milk glass, so popular, really from the 30s into the 50s. I would probably guess those pieces would be somewhere in that. You know, they're not dear, but they, um, they're nice to have, uh, to put little, they're great for vases to do flower decorations or to plant succulents in. So many uh, lovely, lovely things to see. As I said, don't worry, because I will make another visit, or probably multiple visits, and go slower into various areas that we aren't reaching today. But uh, I just really want to walk around, and I'm kind of getting back into the swing of antiquing as it's starting to come along to spring. This is a beautiful piece here. Lovely, lovely pair of lamps. Pretty glass bowl. Now let's see, let's wander, actually, let's see what's in this case. Some wonderful old instruments. It's a pretty little lamp painted in the back. I am looking for lamps as well. I'm always looking for lamps, it seems. This room off often has some nice, uh, very nice larger pieces. That's a pretty desk. And a little Staffordshire dog. That's a pretty, uh, pretty secretary. With drawers in the top will fold out as a little desk. These are great to have for if you don't have a lot of space see what is that 3900 early victorian if you don't have a lot of space this can make a great miniature studio because you can fold that out and put your laptop and painting things on and then you can put things away and uh i do love a, a staffordshire dog a little spaniel 685 again prices are higher here but you can usually be pretty guaranteed that things are curated in such a way that you know it's um they're authentic antiques. This is a pretty six ninety five. That's actually not a bad price for a slant top desk like that. It's an early desk as well, early eighteen hundreds, late seventeen hundreds. Would actually be perfect in Old Kings, my little cottage. Of course, the quintessential maps and whales of New England. Lots of seafaring 
wooden sculptures and the like. This is a darling. I love, love old garden urns. These must be authentic because it's 1800 for the pair, but they really are beautiful. I wish they had the plinths that they probably originally had. But they look really lovely. A little out of my price range. And here you can see in this room, you can look out through the old window onto the little porch we saw at the beginning of our last video. You can see out there the little items. You can see it's a sunny day as well. Another bunny for Bunny Hall. More interesting lamps. I love a good antique floor lamp. Again, don't worry, we will make trips back. Oh, I love that chest. Now this is really interesting. This pair of old puppets. These are such a unique piece. I, I bet that's probably horsetail for the hair. I haven't any idea how old they are. I probably had to, would probably guess late 1800s, early 1900s. It's just pretty to see the old strings and look at their old clothes and look how the hands move. Hello, it seems to say. <laughs> this, this is really a darling set. Such a unique piece. Let's see. 875. Asian articulated wood and cloth marionettes. It's really an interesting piece. You could see that set on a long side table somewhere as a spotlight of the uh, main piece now. This is a darling, darling lamp. I love this. Oh, that cedar, cedar lined chest is always good. 345. It's really pretty. And this is actually, that's a fairly good price for that bit of china. How beautiful. Again, platters are always good to have. Not sure if my camera's focusing or not. But it's just a, again, blue and white, always useful. And what's so lovely about blue and white is you just can mix and mingle old and new, different d designs and patterns just because the continuity of the color makes them really work together. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous old mirror, 895. It's probably Venetian. Some wonderful ship's models. This booth often has really, really good quality early American um, pieces, particularly to New England, the old ship's models. And this is a, here's an old early American desk, 425. It's a federal, so it's quite early probably has original paint. And then this is a beautiful, beautiful chest of drawers. This could work in the bedroom as well. But you can see 18th century, a little out of my price range for the particular project I'm working on, but what a lovely piece. And of course, nautical paintings, ship's models, Oh, this is a beautiful, the, the red painting is, uh, the red uh, original paint on an old chest like that are always uh, quite desirable. It's 8.50. We're lucky to have quite a few blanket chests that we just inherited, luckily, in the house. Oh, here's a beautiful tiger maple. This is gorgeous. I love tiger maple. That little side stand, you could uh, picture that in a an old New England house and uh, the equivalent um early Georgian ladies sitting about it doing their needlework. A gorgeous, gorgeous painting. Of course, I, the tags are always flipped the wrong way. I can never get them. Let's see. 895. Lovely frame as well. That's a beautiful window. So let, oh, this is a lovely piece. This Asian uh, side table. It almost has a look of a mantle. Beautiful carvings. What would be wonderful is to have that and then the only piece on top of it would be those pair of the marionettes we saw in the other room. Wouldn't that be a lovely thing in a side hall? 
beautiful clock. I love clocks. The ticking and chimes of clocks in a quiet house has always been so comforting to me. So many beautiful things. Again, don't worry that I'm not showing everything because I will probably come back multiple times and we'll have more videos. Oh, so, oh, that's a lovely little pewter tea service. So what are their little good things to have? Nautical prints. Oh, this is nice. I love me old mechanical banks, like 1900s mechanical banks or earlier. This probably is a reproduction though, because yes, it is a reproduction, 125. Although it said one sold, similar for 565. If it were an actual original, like from the 1800s to the early 1900s, it would be worth thousands. I wish we could uh, try it out because they're quite fun to watch. I also love little simple things like glass bottles. Um, often we find these types of things digging in a, at the cottage, or, or if you're lucky, you'll find them on the beach and such. But what's nice is this dealer has, uh, again, placed them by color, so you can see the, the lovely greens and the cobalts and the beautiful purples, and of course the clears with just the cast of blue. But those are always lovely to, a uh, <laughs> funny little mask, always lovely to keep uh, on window ledges and things to let the light shine through. It's a pretty screen, fire screen. And kind of wandering our way back through, so um, I think we're probably getting about the end, so maybe I'll get a good shot of this <laughs> darling little Cape Cod pen pennant, which actually shows the uh, the old windmill in East Ham. And actually, we used to live in East Ham. It's the other end of Cape Cod. It's a really great little spot. So that's two ninety five. So I think this will probably be good for this visit. So let's have a nice, enjoyable drive through New England and by the harbor. Well, thank you for joining me this week and for our second part of our trip to the Sandwich Antique Mart, and I hope you enjoyed that, and we will definitely return again, and I think I'm going to close, besides watching a fisherman working here in the harbor, I'm going to close with one of my own paintings inspired by Seaside Living. It's called To the Lighthouse, also inspired by Virginia Woolf, and I thank you again for joining me for this week's vlog. And I shall see you next week, and in the comments during the week. And as always, remember, stay creative. Cheers. <laughs>